Modern Warfare 3 Season 1 Reloaded Update goes live here in a couple hours, and here is everything that you need to know that's coming in the Season 1 Reloaded Update for Modern Warfare 3. First off, we're getting a brand new 6v6 multiplayer map called Rio, and unfortunately, it's not the Duran Durans is to most of the multiplayer community, as the map is actually going to be a lot of street fighting, along with an upscale shopping center and plenty of long alleyways, forcing you to switch between close and long range at a moment's notice. And on top of this, we're also going to get three new multiplayer modes to go alongside the new multiplayer map. We're getting Team Gunfight, Infected, and Headquarters. Team Gunfight is going to be allowing you to experience gunfight on a larger scale. In this version, your team will compete in 6v6 across the standard Standard multiplayer maps with traditional gunfight. However, your team will add to the collective gunfight score, and every time you die, you'll get the new upgraded gun. Headquarters for coming back, it's going to be a securing headquarters objective, and once you collect and capture the position, you'll have to hold it for as long as possible to accrue points. With respawns disabled, you gotta be ready to play very conservatively at a moment's notice. You wanna try not to die when your team has the objective. However, the objective can only be held for 45 seconds before it moves on to the next point around the map, much like hardpoint. And the last game mode we're getting in Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer is Infected. You begin the match with one player randomly assigned as the infected, and the infected player's goal is to eliminate and transform all the other players into infected operators, who then join their side and try to hunt down the remaining survivors, using their best skills and strategies to keep the infected at bay. This usually involves a lot of camping, a lot of claymores, and a lot of shotguns. And along with these three new multiplayer modes, we're also going to get, in a couple weeks, a limited time mode for the boys TV show. It will be called Souped Up Siege, and this event is kind of unique. It is a lot like Kill Confirmed. However, in this twist on the classic mode, once you kill an enemy operator, they will drop a dose of Temp V. That is the temporary superpowers that we had in Warzone previously. And it gives you a bunch of different abilities like Heat Vision, Electric Storm, and a couple other things that are going to be coming with this season. However, no boys event is complete without a couple of the superheroes on your team. And the two superheroes we're getting with this event are the new character of Firecracker coming in Season 4 of The Boys and A-Train coming as a playable operator in Modern Warfare 3. But the biggest part of the Season 1 Reloaded Update is Ranked Play. And Ranked Play is honestly something I recommend everyone does if you want to get better at Call of Duty. It teaches you to play a lot more tactically, it teaches you to play as a team, and it teaches you to play the objectives in multiplayer. And ranked play is exactly the same rules that the Call of Duty League follows. So if you are trying to be a professional Call of Duty player, then this is what you need to play. So first off, you can only unlock this after you reach level 55. Ranked play also has an added benefit of giving you every single weapon in Modern Warfare 3 and Modern Warfare 2 for free along with all their attachments. There's no grind to get it. In ranked play, everyone starts out with everything, including killstreaks. However, with ranked play, there's a lot of things that are actually GA'd or banned from the Call of Duty League. One great example is that ranked mode does not allow rocket launchers, and the Call of Duty League determines what is balanced and what is not so everyone has a level playing field. So one other thing to note is that you do have friendly fire. It is enabled in all ranked play matches. But you're probably wondering, how does ranked play work and what do I need to know? For rank, you will begin at rank one and your rank represents your ranked career. Every match you earn gives you stars and ranks you up. Rank is permanent and consist across all seasons. Skill division, however, you will start out in season one as a bronze one, and you can advance all the way through eight skill divisions and tiers by earning SR, your skill rate. SR is awarded when you win based on personal and team performance. If you 250 to zero team, you're gonna get more SR than if you won 250 to 249. However, in subsequent seasons, you will be dropped back by three tiers, and the highest rank you can start a new season in is Diamond 1, so keep that in mind. However, one thing to note is that with SR, you will get penalized for being inactive from games, disconnecting from games early, or engaging in repeated friendly fire. If you're killing the same player on your team every round of search and destroy because you don't like him, Call of Duty is going to smack your SR rating into the dirt. And something that I like is that you can literally combust into fire in ranked play. That can sound a little scary, but when you win three games in a row, your emblem will actually catch on fire, starting out with red. Once you get to five wins, it'll change color again, and once you get to nine wins, it'll change color one more time. This will carry forward until you lose a game or if you don't touch ranked play for 72 hours. Ranked play also only has three game modes. You have the Call of Duty League Search and Destroy, there is no respawning, you have a 90 second round timer with friendly fire to enable, and the only maps to play Search and Destroy on are High Rise, Invasion, Karachi, Skid Row, and Terminal. As far as the Call of Duty League second game mode, Hardpoint, you'll have a five minute time limit with 250 score limit, 60 second objective rotation, and friendly fire is enabled. One thing to note is that that five minute time limit actually stops when you get on the point. So a couple supported maps for this include Invasion, Karachi, Skid Row, 
sub base, and terminal. And the last game mode in the Call of Duty League is Control. 30 lives per team, 90 second time limit, and three rounds to win. Friendly fire enabled, once again, and there's only three maps, High Rise, Invasion, and Karachi. Now, one thing to note is that time stops when you get on the point, and if you capture one of the control points, A or B, you'll have another minute added to that time limit timer, allowing you to keep going for a little bit further, but a lot of times the time limit often causes players to push in and try to get control and end up costing a lot of lives. With all this rank play stuff coming, there's some unique rewards that you're going to see right here coming across your screen. I'm not going to talk about them because there is a ton. And we're going to move on to zombie. In zombies, not a lot has actually changed with the season one reload update. The biggest change is that you will have a new challenge in the form of the South Korean born operator, Dokopi. She's a key lieutenant within the Terminus Outcomes program. She's working alongside Vladimir Makarov, and she really has a deep understanding of electronic warfare. What makes her so kind of scary is that she's on top of a skyscraper and she uses drones, turrets, and a Wilson as a main line of defense. If you can get past her and kill her, then she will give you a unique reward for Call of Duty Zombies. And it's something that I believe you're going to need as we get later into the zombie seasons to complete the massive Easter egg challenge. Warzone has a ton of things coming, starting off with the Champions Quest. The Champions Quest is returning to Modern Warfare 3 and allow you to get the Champions Domination skin by completing the quest in Urzikstan. I'll talk about that a little bit more here in just one second. However, we're also going to get a couple of new unique things coming to Warzone that are a little bit more exciting. And the first thing that we're getting is a brand new Gulag Night Vision event. You will battle in the dark using night vision goggles in this event that cuts the lights in the gulag, setting up an epic night vision skirmish that will put your fighting abilities to the test. You will have to secure the win to return the match and leave your opponents in the dark. You will also be able to do a new weapon case challenge. So in Warzone, we're going to have a new weapon case objective. You're going to have to be able to pick it up and either win the game or extract with the weapon case to completely get the reward. And from what we know so far, it's gonna be a brand new unique weapon that you'll only be able to get by exfilling with it at the end of the game. However, your entire entire team gets the reward if you win the game. And one other way that you can get out of it early instead of having to win the game is to use the Covert Exfil. That will also guarantee you the reward when you use the Covert Exfil. And speaking of which, the Covert Exfil is a new Exfil you can leave the game of Warzone early with, but there's only five Exfils available to purchase per match for a very high price, $30,000. It'll be in buy stations before the Gulag closes, and once the Gulag closes, you can't use them. It'll call in a helicopter that can fly by and pick up any player and take them out of the match. Ideally with that weapon case in your possession, but players can also compete to earn the most successful covert exfils with a new covert leaderboard stat. And the last major change we're getting in Warzone, we're going to get the infamous Champion's Quest, making its debut return in Urzikstan. It will challenge players with a new high level task that will test all of your squad's collective skills in an attempt to witness an extreme explosive finale in Urzikstan. The first step, win 30 games total within a season or five consecutive matches in a row. Complete that and the next steps will fall into place, meaning that you'll have to actually collect different elements from around the map and build them together and actually assemble the nuke in Urzikstan. And then the nuke will detonate, giving you a confirmed win for Warzone and a unique calling card for blowing up the map of Urzikstan. And last but not least, the only two things left to talk about, the new weapons. We're getting the HRM-9 SMG, which is going to be a lightweight yet stable submachine gun for close quarters combat and putting down enemies quickly, sporting a high rate of fire, excellent handling and mobility. However, it's going to come at the cost of very high recoil. It's perfect for that kind of run and gun type play, where it's probably going to be pretty good in Warzone from what we know coming into the game. And the next weapon that we're getting is the TAC Evolver. It's going to be an advanced multi-caliber LMG capable of firing 762 or 556 with minimal adjustments to the weapon. It's going to be versatile and exceptionally lethal in the right hands. And it's an all new light machine gun that you can adjust and modify however you want. And it will dominate Warzone for sure. And if you want to know what's next for the Modern Warfare 3 story and everything going forward from here, check out this video right here.